so this presentation contains uh, the work I mostly uh, have done during my uh, master's thesis together with Zoltan Zimboras and uh, my colleagues at Ericsson. Uh, I will talk about uh, the photonic uh, quantum machine learning. Uh, so my uh, agenda for this talk is the following. I will uh, give a short motivation uh, about why we do quantum machine learning at all. Then I will review the basic concepts of machine learning. After that, uh, I will introduce uh, quantum computing uh, in the photonic uh, um, formalism. And then I will introduce uh, photonic quantum machine learning. And finally, I will present some numerical experiments we have did. So if we look at the timeline of quantum computation, we see that the first algorithms uh, appeared at the 80s. And uh, after a decade, at the late 90s, uh, uh, researchers were able to produce the first uh, qubits. And recently, in the recent years, there were an enormous development in terms of quantum hardware. For example, Google. Uh, Google achieved quantum supremacy in 2019. And after that, a Chinese team at the USTC uh, again achieved quantum supremacy. And the interesting fact about the Chinese team is that they used the photonic architecture. So uh, today we are in the NISC era, which means that we have noisy intermediate scale devices. That means that we have uh, way less than 1,000 qubits. Uh, in the circuit model, of course, D-Wave has more than, uh, that, so D-Wave company has more than 1,000 qubits, but they are doing other kinds of uh, computation. They are doing quantum annealing. Uh, and the, the qubits we have right now is, uh, uh, there are, they have a really short coherence time, so they are very noisy. They have um, large cross -talk and they also have a, a significant gate and readout noises. If we are talking about photonic quantum machine learning, we have to mention photon loss, which is uh, above 50% in the current quantum hardware. We also have a large number of dark counts in the photonic hardware. So uh, since we cannot run a proved quantum algorithms like Schwarz algorithm or Grover search algorithm, we have to come up with other ideas. And we have to come up with algorithms that are specifically designed for the NISC devices. And some of the best candidates for NISC uh, era quantum advantage are the simulation of quantum chemistry and the simulation of many body systems. And also there are the variational quantum optimization methods like the QAOA algorithm, and finally, quantum machine learning, which I will uh, talk more about later on. Now let's review the basic concepts of machine learning. In machine learning, we have uh, mostly three types of algorithms. Uh, for example, supervised learning, when we learn patterns in labeled data. For example, we have to classify dogs versus cats, and we have to train a neural network to to classify dogs and cats. In unsupervised learning, we have to deal with large amounts of unlabeled data and uh, find patterns in unlabeled data, for example, find clusters. Lastly, we have uh, reinforcement learning, which uh, is aimed at solving uh, control problems or to learn to navigate in an environment, for example, to play Atari games. In this presentation, I will mostly talk about supervised learning. So when we have uh, problems like, uh, for example, to, to differentiate between cats and dogs, uh, these problems are very hard to do in uh, imperative uh, computation. For example, to implement uh, an algorithm that uh, differentiates between cats and dogs is, is very hard or impossible when we are doing with uh, traditional computing solutions. But we also know that our brains are very good at solving such problems. 
and the idea of of uh, neural networks is to to make uh, a model of our brain and simulate it with a computer what we know about uh, the biological neural networks is that each uh, neuron has some input uh, synapses input dendrites and has output synapses and we know that uh, the information on the input side comes as potential uh, uh, spikes as voltage spikes which have a uh, certain frequencies and the output depends on the weighted sum of these input frequencies and if this weighted sum of the input frequencies reaches uh, a certain threshold potential then uh, the output dendrites uh, so 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 then appears the output so the mathematical model of uh, a neuron a single neuron can be simplified uh, as uh, this formula and uh, in machine learning what happens is that we make an abstraction of of the bi biological neuron so that uh, each neuron uh, works as uh, uh, matrix multiplication on the input weights on the input uh, plus uh, uh, so-called bias and then a nonlinear activation function is applied we also have to mention that it is mathematically proven that such neural networks are universal function approximators which means that if we have a very very large number of neurons then we can approximate any given function to a, to a given precision but the problem is that training these neural networks is not so um, easy. So to solve this problem of training neural networks, uh, the backpropagation algorithm was developed, which essentially means that we have to define a loss function, which we have uh, uh, input the, the label data and the outputs of the neural network and we have to calculate the derivatives of um, the, the derivative of this loss function with respect to network parameters. And after we calculated the derivatives, we have to update the, net, the network parameters with a certain update rule. Next, I will talk a little bit about quantum computation. In our projects, we, we use the circuit model of quantum computation, which means that we have an initial quantum state, uh, which is the ground state, or, or, or initial state, or in the photonic concept, we will have the vacuum state. Then we apply some unitary operation, and uh, this unitary operation can be a very large, very complex unitary. And after that, we have to measure some observable. And the goal is to, to build up this unitary operator such that after measurement, we get the right result. As I mentioned, we will talk about photonic quantum computation and this, it is a little bit different from the qubit based architectures. When we are talking about qubits, we have the zero and one state, which are the only two possible states. And of course, any kind of superposition of these states and the dimension of such a quantum computer is two to the N, which in where N is the number of qubits. In contrary, in photonic quantum computation, we have a Fock basis, which means that in each photonic mode, we have a uh, uh, theoretically infinite number of photons. So the dimension of the Hilbert space is in theory infinite, but of course, in reality, there is some cutoff dimension, which we call D, and uh, the dimension of the Hilbert space is D to the N, where N is the number of photonic modes. As we can see, there are different kinds of errors. In the photonic architecture, the most important error is the photon loss, and of course, gate errors and measurement errors. But the photonic architecture also has some advantages. For example, we usually don't need uh, cryogenic temperatures in order to operate these devices. The formalism we use is uh, the phase space description, which is equivalent to the Fox space descriptions. Uh, compared to the Fox space description, uh, 
where we have uh, an infinite number of basis vectors in the Hilbert space, and thus we have uh, infinite by infinite matrices. In the phase space description, we have only two n-dimensional spaces, which are a symplectic uh, spaces called uh, the quantum phase space. And we deal with the, op the quadrature operators, so the position and, and momentum operators instead of the creation and annihilation operators. But the most important difference is that um, in the Fox space, we had linear operators, but in the phase space description, we have nonlinear operators. So in the phase space description, we deal with uh, the basis vectors, with, which are eigenvectors of the, moment of the position operator. And the most important uh, function that characterizes a state is the so-called Wigner function. The Wigner function can be used to calculate observables and also to calculate purity of the state and also to do uh, visualizations of, uh, of quantum states. One important class of photonic states is, uh, are the Gaussian states. So Gaussian states are essence, essentially states for which the Wigner function is a multivariate Gaussian distribution. For example, if we calculate the Wigner function for the vacuum state, we get a, a, such a, a simple Gaussian formula. So in the photonic quantum computation, uh, we have gates very similar to the qubit case, but these gates are uh, expressed in terms of creation and annihilation operators, or if you work in the phase space description, they can be expressed as, uh, as functions of uh, position and momentum operators. Uh, there are two very important classes of, of quantum photonic gates. Uh, there are the Gaussian gates, which uh, transform Gaussian states into Gaussian states, such, uh, uh, for example, the displacement operator, the rotation operator, and, and beam splitters. And we also have non-Gaussian gates, which uh, act as nonlinear transformations in the space space. And there is a theorem which is very useful that if we combine all these Gaussian states with one Gaussian gates with one single non-Gaussian gate, then we have a, a universal gate set that can approximate any unitary operator. Uh, I give a few examples of, uh, of Gaussian and non-Gaussian states. Uh, on the left side, we see the vacuum state. Then in the middle, we see the vacuum state applied uh, by a squeezing. So a squeezing operator is applied to the vacuum state. And this is still a Gaussian, Gaussian state, but it has uh, an anisotropic distribution. However, if we apply a nonlinear gate, for example, the cubic phase gate, then things get very complicated. And uh, the computational complexity of, of calculating the Wigner function increases. So what we do in photonic quantum computation, quantum machine learning is essentially we created the, uh, or we not created, we used the uh, photonic model of uh, a neural network. So we can do a very similar transformation with uh, a photonic quantum neural network, a very similar transformation to what we do in the classical case. The difference is that the input variable is the phase space vector of the initial state. Then we apply a matrix multiplication where M is a symplectic matrix plus a, a displacement operator, uh, which uh, is a displacement in the phase space. And then we apply a non-Gaussian gate. So what we see here is that if we combine some Gaussian states, Gaussian gates, for example, the displacement gate, uh, a general interferometer gate, a squeezing gate, and at the end, we apply some non-Gaussian gates, then we can realize a, a formula that is very similar to what we have in the classical fully connected case. So we will use this uh, quantum circuit to make quantum machine learning. And also we do a hybrid training loop, which means that uh, 
all of the parameters of the quantum circuit are saved in the memory of a classical computer. The classical computer uh, calculates the objective function based on expectation values that we receive from the quantum computer. Then, they, then the classical part of the computer uh, applies the gradient step and uh, feeds the parameters back into the quantum circuit to calculate the next expectation values. What we have to say is that uh, calculating gradients in, uh, in the case of uh, quantum computers is not so simple, but in specific cases when uh, after the gate, which we have to calculate the parameter for the gradient for this gate, after if, if after this gate, we only have Gaussian uh, gates, so V is Gaussian and also the measurement operator is a Gaussian operator, then we can use the so-called parameter shift rule, which means that we essentially calculate the same circuit with shifted parameters and we take the uh, difference between the two measured operators. What is important here that this shifting parameter can be a large uh, number, for example, pi over two, so we don't have to deal with uh, very small numbers. But again, this works in some specific cases when V and B are Gaussian operators. If these are not Gaussian operators, then we have to do the finite difference method, which is much more uh, hard to compute with the compu quantum computer. So for our numerical results, we used Strawberry Fields, which is a software package for simulating photonic quantum computers. And we also use TensorFlow to calculate gradients. And I will show three numerical experiments we did, uh, a classification, a regression, and a variational quantum eigensolver experiment. In the classification, we uh, got, uh, got three data sets from the sklearn package. They are very simple data sets, and uh, the spatial features of these data points are normalized to be between minus one and one. We applied the so-called displacement encoding, which means that the spatial features were, were encoded with a displacement operator, and we used uh, a softmax distribution on the measured expectation values. So here is how our uh, circuit architecture looks like. We have the encoding on the first two Q modes, and we have the measurement on the second Q modes, second two Q modes. And between them, we have three layers of quantum neural networks. And we train this network with the cross entropy loss function. So what we achieved in these numerical experiments is that after a few hundred epochs of training, uh, the circuit learned to classify these data points. And what is even more uh, interesting that if we approximate the expectation values with a finite number of shots, we get almost the same uh, good results, even when using uh, only 100 shots. We did something very similar in the regression case. Uh, here, we only had one feature to encode. So we encoded this feature on both the Q modes, but we only had to measure the last Q mode. And we trained this circuit with uh, uh, mean squared error loss. In the case of regression, we had two synthetic data sets, a hyperbolic tangent function, uh, a quadric function, and uh, this function, which is um, a measurement of the IV curve of a photonic diode. So uh, our quantum neural network can uh, fit the data, uh, but here in, in this regression case, we had to uh, implement a larger number of, of shots. For example, we, here we had to do at minimum uh, 1000 shots to achieve a good performance. Last, we solved the uh, bose hubbard model for some parameters with the variational quantum eigensolver. Uh, when doing uh, variational quantum eigensolvers, uh, we do the same thing as we did in 
uh, regression and classification, but the loss function here is essentially the expectation value of some Hamiltonian. And we see that the quantum architecture is able to find the, the ground state of this Hamiltonian when using uh, uh, this gradient descent rule and a finite number of shots. So in, in conclusion, we presented the continuous variable quantum computing, the formalism, and uh, we showed that uh, continuous variable quantum neural networks work as uh, universal quantum approximators, and we presented some numerical experiments. In the future, we want to test quantum neural networks on more complex data. We also plan to improve the QNN architecture, and we also work on uh, developing quantum-specific optimization algorithms. Thank you for the attention, and if you have questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much, Donny. Uh, I, I stop uh, the sharing. Maybe you can go back to uh, the camera. Uh, questions? Please, one. Uh, this uh, quantum computing, maybe it's better, better to uh, what, what kind of initial states do you consider? So we we also uh, we always started with the vacuum state. So so uh, the psi null state is essentially the vacuum state. Hmm? Is it okay? Any further? Uh, Karoy, speak up, please. I wanted to ask uh, what uh, kind of uh, quantum chemical uh, methods can uh, be applied. Uh, you mentioned that the, that the first slide maybe. Uh, can you hear? No, no, can you repeat? So, so it's one of the first slides you had uh, a, a remark that uh, quantum chemical uh, simulation were also done. Uh, do, can can you say something more on that? Well, uh, when I said uh, quantum chemistry, I essentially uh, talked about variational quantum eigensolvers. But uh, in our case, we did uh, variational quantum eigensolvers for the photonic architecture, where uh, we have bosons. And we know that if we want to simulate chemistry, we have to deal with fermions, since electrons are fermions. So uh, chemistry is better suited for uh, qubit-based uh, quantum computers. Uh, I have not seen uh, any uh, research work that uh, showed that uh, chemistry simulation can be done with, with photons. Of course, if you realize uh, photons, if you realize qubit by the help of photons, then uh, you could uh, do quantum chemistry with uh, photonic quantum computation. Uh, 